constantly wanted to pick up. There are a couple of available champions. Shivana is available. That was uh, the ban that wasn't put through this time. That would be a good pickup for them. Rengar as well is available after the bans phase. So they're still waiting to see what they're going to pick up. So clearly a lot of discussion out of Super Team EU Kappa on what they want to play here. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, Shivana is usually something you'll pick up early because it's very safe, can be top lane, can be jungle. You can fit the rest of your composition around it. And it's just a very solid pick. Like, it works everywhere really well. Um, but we'll see exactly what they lock in. You're a couple seconds ahead, so... Yeah, it was Shivana that they okay. picking up. So nothing surprising there. Uh, yeah. First pick, Shivana, very standard. I believe you've seen it in most games today that Shivana has been available. Yeah, you uh, you don't look like a genius. You don't look like you have a crystal ball to, <laughs> to call that, but uh, it's always nice when it happens. And we'll see what Eternity do in response. So a lot of the priority early picks have been taken away from these guys. So we'll see exactly. It might just be composition picks we see here. One of those things that uh, I, I would like to say that I borrowed Jat's crystal ball, but unfortunately this one uh, you could pick with uh, a blindfold on. Yeah. So, yeah, what will Eternity look to pick up in exchange for that? Again, these teams are taking a fair while over what they wanted to play, and I, it, I wonder whether that's because of the bans. See, of course, Vi was played in the last game, banned out now. Lee Sin wasn't banned in the first game, has been banned this time. So it looks like Maweth is going to pick up Elise and a Jinx alongside that. So uh, fairly common picks, but they're taking a while over deciding. Fantastic. At least they have the Spider Queen here, and... Uh also picking up Jinx. Yeah, it's uh, not too surprising at all. Now, Chewed Up and Jinsu, what will they pick up here? Because uh, Chewed Up has played uh, a number of AD carries with all of the games we've seen him. We've seen him play uh, quite a bit of Ezreal previously in Season 3. Ezreal not played so much these days, but uh, still does have his place in a good few team compositions. They'll go with Gragas again to take that away from uh, Tarados this time. So it will be on the team of Super Team EU Kappa. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, a very just solid pick right there. Um, like, Annie fits well with basically any other AD carry. Uh, Lucian is actually something I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't see picked even earlier. Um, but definitely, like, Gracchus, again, is one of those very common mid laners. We've seen how strong he is in previous games. Those big explosive casks can really just turn a fight. And we saw that from Tarados in game one. He just landed some magnificent explosive casts, and that just really turned the team fights. So you saw the one in top lane actually turned the game on its head. That ace that uh, Eternity got allowed them to take a tower and Baron with those five kills and really just start to snowball the game through. Up until that point, it was a very close game. So uh, hopefully we'll see something similar in this game again, where both teams just trading back and forth. And Now, this is an interesting play. Kale is normally picked as uh, a counter to Vi, but Vi is banned out, so you have to wonder why there was no Orianna pickup here. It's usually a response, I agree, and especially against Gragas, Orianna has a slightly better early game, but kind of uh, peters out into a very even lane after that. But Kale right here, it looks like they might have a priority with the next pickup um, that they want to keep alive, or they want to deny it from Exler, which is a possibility. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they're running a Cogmore composition where that would go towards keeping them safe. I mean, we haven't seen teams run that in a very long time. Yeah. That's that's beginning of Season 3 was the last time I even think I contemplated seeing that, if I even remember rightly. So I, they've already got their AD carry locked in as well. So that, it's, it's not quite going to be that, but it just seems to me like maybe it's just a comfort pick. I mean, Kale is a fairly consistent laner. Um, we talked earlier about Righteous Fury giving you the ability to farm and push waves fairly quickly, but I don't know. It just, to me, doesn't seem like the optimal pick here. Yeah, of course. And it might be, again, just taking that away from Exler because he has done incredibly well with that pick. Um, but either way, they're going to go with their own pickups, which will be Evelyn and Caitlyn, which I don't think would have changed with the last second on the stream. So... Again, Evelyn will be picked up. It did well in the first game. It could have done better. Um, but all the kills were centralized on the, t on the Evelyn, so they were kind of forced uh, to use Evelyn as their like, only way to win the team fights. 
And my problem with the way that uh, the team put the kills onto Evelyn was the fact that they used it for more damage, which is a risky play and can work out because if you can burst somebody quickly, then of course the the, the damage is going to be worth it because you can really disrupt the team fight. And we saw that once or twice in the game where you know Eternity couldn't really get the team fight they wanted. However, this time around. I wonder whether they'll build it a little bit tankier and a little bit more survivable because there's some big, big assassins on the playing field here from Eternity. Yeah, and especially when you're playing against Elise, like, it's so easy to read your opponent. Well, I say easy, but it's easy in the sense that if Evelyn does find herself Elise, Elise will just kill her one and one early. It's very difficult if they find themselves out of position, if the gank is very... Um, uh, like telegraphed that Elise can just find himself there. Mowolf will just completely destroy that gank before it even happens. So it looks like all the teams are locked in. That Kazix pick up again, going towards that uh, that amount of damage on the assassins, and I'm waiting for a trade here. Actually, uh, Kale top lane has been played, but isn't exactly the most. Uh, well, Welcome to season two. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm thinking we're in season two here. Although Kazix really wouldn't have been Existing. that available then. Yeah. Uh, but wow. Okay. So it's been locked. Kale top lane going up against the Shivana. Interesting. Hmm. Um, I guess not actually. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I guess we'll have to see what the result is, because we've got to head for a very quick break here before we get stunned. It will result in a lot of damage. And in the straight-up trade, Stratagas and uh, Nikos will come out better, because Caitlyn doesn't trade amazingly. But over time, they'll just grind them down with that insane poke range. And uh, we will be back on the stream very shortly, guys. Uh, hopefully you have stuck with us. Looks like we are back live. There's uh, a couple of little issues with Twitch here and there. We've uh, risen their heads throughout the day but nevertheless we are in game number two between eternity and super team eu kappa and uh big harass being put down already in that bottom lane indeed and in the top lane we had ginsu looking for that gank onto ko and nothing really came of it so top lane is fairly even at the moment we haven't seen uh insane harass from either of these players and ginsu is still hanging around got that double buff and wants it to be utilized flash forwards from mozilla as well mike has already used his flash this could spell the end of him stunned up underneath the turret mowell comes in from nowhere cocoon lands and that'll be the one for one fantastic cocoon out of mouth to lock down evelyn under the turret and take massive damage so one for one overall slight gold lead will go to super team of course getting the first blood on that one but even pretty much as we saw throughout the first game yeah but more importantly the double buff is gone from evelyn so that's going to hurt the first couple levels in terms of her ganks and that is really where evelyn shines so that has really upset evelyn's jungle and uh, Evelyn will struggle a little bit, as you alluded to there. Of course, would like to have that blue buff for that extra cooldown. Mana, um, mana replenishment as well. Mana reduction. Mana, I was going to say <laughs> mana reduction is uh, something that Evelyn would not like. But uh, we are into our third best of three of the day. So at some point, there had to be some kind of faux pas. But uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised I lasted this long. <laughs> yeah, we've been casting for quite a long time now. Not quite into the early uh, hours of the morning, which sometimes happens during these challenger tournaments here, Stress. <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't happen, but I don't think it would. And uh, everyone just goes back to farming. Yeah, Maweth looked for a gang there in the middle lane. Couldn't quite find it, so we'll return to uh, the enemy jungle, actually. Not returning to his own. Uh, up in that top lane again, there's a lot of trading back and forth between... Uh, the two top laners, but bottom lane is where the focus is going to be because the junglers are about to converge. Yeah, Moaf has uh, moved down, does not quite connect Cocoon, it was a pixel away. Yero found himself the stun, jump up, jump down onto the minion line, and it doesn't look like they can go any further as the Flame Chompers lands onto all three players. I didn't realize you were a member of House of Pain. That's, uh... <laughs> I, um... <laughs> Don't worry. Sorry, that's, Someone's uh... going to get that reference, and it Somebody wasn't me. Somebody will get that. I'm just... <laughs> 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 I, I should not bring music references into this but nevertheless <laughs> neither jungler really managed to get anything off then again trading just blow for blow back and forth here between these two teams oh so close looks like nobody really has the number of the either 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, it probably would have worked, but Moaf has uh, been followed by Axel Easy. Auto attack picks up the double buff, and that has actually reset it literally as it was going to run out. Gragas making an aggressive play like that is something that you don't see all that often. That was all the way over by the wolf camp from uh, Eternity. So nice pickup there out of Super Team, really knowing that where they can trade. And uh, especially against an Elise, not that often that you see her caught out, but she was a little bit damaged from that earlier trade in the bottom lane. Yeah, indeed. Like, Elise players generally just sit in the jungle, sit in the enemy jungle with the knowledge that they're going to be strong enough to do anything. Charados actually trading off against Exila despite the double buff. Flashes out, Ignite is still ticking down, but I'm sure Happy Hour should keep him alive. Indeed it does. And that just fed another kill to the double buff Gragas. And we saw earlier that uh, the game went in favour of uh, Eternity early on with a couple of kills, but they managed to bring it back to Super Team EU, and maybe they're looking for another kill in that top lane after forcing the intervention out. Yep, and the flash is down, so they could definitely go for round two, but Gwinsu, uh, Ginsu, I should say, is not in the best of shapes. He's level five versus level five of Moath because of that earlier death, so it's not too big of an issue, and now the second buffs are starting to spawn. Yeah, Yero getting caught out a little bit by Zap there, but uh, not quite able to convert the kill where Eternity looked for maybe the hook. But Yero does have that stun charged up. They've got to be careful that there's no kind of counter engage. It all depends on how far Yero is from level 6. He's still half a level away, so no chance of Tibbers just yet, but Eternity do have to be careful. Yeah, it always amuses me when I see Karzix pick up the uh, triple longsword because <laughs> you're just like, what? But then, of course, Brutalizer and then any other item that you really choose to build the extra longsword into. So it all makes sense in the end. Yeah, it's surprisingly efficient, although he does get explosive casked away. He does. Red buff is still ticking down. And the last auto attack from the minion will drop into 20 HP. And Tarados does not want to stick around. <laughs> nice flash out of weighted... Uh, the last parts of damage, the stun has landed in that bottom lane, still not level 6 is Yarrow, so that was just the incineration, but it looks like Ginsu has made his way down into this bottom lane, and Elise isn't quite in position to counter gank yet. Yep, the ward has come out, but of course that wouldn't have seen Ginsu at this stage as he just jukes in and out of vision range. Jump forward from the arrow, lands the stun onto two. Nikos will drop, Stratagast gets a perfect flame chompers down, but they're going for this tower dive with that extra shielding. They're going to take a couple tower hits, and is it going to be enough? That'll be the kill in return. Ace in the hole picks up the second, so two for one trade in the bottom lane. I think Super Team EU will be happy with that. Anytime you can get the advantage on the kills there, that is uh, always a good thing, but... Will they be able to push down this turret? Elise is there to defend and shoot up and Yarrow really don't feel confident or at least choose not to take down that tower even though they did have uh, a bit of a minion wave there. So a conscious decision to keep that lane in the 2v2s and why wouldn't you when you look at the CS difference 66 to 45 here at 9 minutes into the game. And plus Caitlyn just picked up a red buff from that uh, interaction. Yeah. So. That, that just means there's very little chance of Stratagas and Nikos not only trading off effectively, but getting into that uh, into that trade before they're already being chunked down to about 50% from severe poking uh, from that Caitlyn. Uh, Mozilla jumps onto Mike Yara in the top lane. Intervention is live, so is both of his summoners, but uh, it does knock him down to about 25% HP. And that's one of the difficulties in this Kale lane is I'm just not too sure that past the intervention and the heal that'll come out from Kale, she can't really take the damage from Shivana. Whereas on the other hand, Shivana will really want to trade in those fights. And Toros lands on a barrel, Ignite is ticking. It will be enough to pick up the kill for Gregors. Yeah, Exila just uh, takes a drink as his foe just bleeds out in the middle lane. And Yarrow just con uh, confirming that vision in the bot of the... Uh bottom lane and now the dragon is live so it looks like this might be an objective they'll want to go over since Tarados is in the death chamber. Now how will they be able to snowball this Gragas? 3 and 0 with 65 CS so on his person right now is 1300 gold. Wouldn't be surprised to see uh, them pick up the rest of that Athene's Unholy Grail. I think he's a little bit away from actually completing that item but alongside that double Doran's ring and the Fiendish Codex uh, didn't actually complete that recall so uh, we'll push the mid lane a little bit further and Shivana doing what Shivana does especially against a, a lane opponent that can't really duel her and that's farm out behind the turret. Mozilla has to be careful that the rotation doesn't come across from Maweth but I think Mozilla's done this enough times to know exactly how far he can push that button. 
Yeah, and it means that he'll at least draw the jungler's presence into the top lane, means the rest of his, uh, his lanes can be very safe in that fact. And plus, it's just as soon as he just sees him through the fog of war, then he's going to be very happy. And now that they've seen him in the top lane, guess what? It's an easy dragon. Yeah, and, and that's just really smart play by Mozilla there. They knew exactly how far they could push that. And that is going to be an uncontested dragon. That's just really smart map awareness out from Super Team EU. Yep, Mozilla's uh, aggression past that turret has resulted in the objective being taken. 6-2, to two, um, the objective advantage to Super Team Kappa. And they are in very good shape. So, um, most likely Mozilla will just carry farming behind the turret. There's no reason not to. Dragon's Ascent comes through. He might look for the kill here on Mikey R. Intervention comes down. Still has the flash and ignite. But the ultimate has already been used. Chewed up, takes down Shradagaz. And the fresh double kill in the bot lane. Yeah, that was not even using Tibbers because uh, they didn't have the flash Tibbers available. Sorry, it was using Tibbers. What am I talking about? Yero gets stunned down. Under the turret will get picked off as the turret goes down. And uh, Maweth now on the run. Yep, Repel comes up, drops down onto the onto the uh, onto the white. I'm never sure what to call that, um, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be dropping onto it regardless. 109 gold, nice. There's one, that's one of those faux pas is that Taradas uh, goes uh, gets aggressed upon by Exile in that mid lane. Both of them trading off fairly evenly. Looks like they want to disengage though. Yeah, and Taradas does not want to go any near, uh, anywhere near that. Exile clears the minion wave and backs on out. So uh, three zero and zero in very good shape. One tower advantage, and they're just gradually getting ahead, which is different from the first game where we just had both these teams in a very even state until we saw Eternity really pushing forwards and securing the game. It's always confusing when you have an Annie and you're trying to recap a team fight <laughs> because I was looking at mid lane with the engagement. And when Tibbers is on the field, it's not greyed out. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, Tibbers is still available. No. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, well, one of those things. But uh, yeah. again, this I still question this Kale pick for this top lane because I really don't feel like Kale can duel Mozilla. And that's what you need against the Shivana is somebody that can stop her from pushing. Maybe as Kale gets stronger into this game, they'll be able to prevent that kind of push. But right now, it's just not doing the job that they need it to. It's interesting that it almost feels like they're just conceding that lane, saying this is going to lose, therefore we'll throw down the Kale pick as a composition pick, and then just see how it goes. And now, with the rest of the team around this jungle, they have great pick potential, but so does the team of Eternity, as they collect themselves one onto Yero. Yeah, they do get the first one. No uh, real chance there to get any more, even though they would like to get that Kha'Zix to reset, like we saw Charu do earlier for Meet Your Makers, but... Uh... Now Exile gets stunned in place, has to be careful that he doesn't overstay his welcome in this jungle because we just saw Eternity pick Yarrow off. They can do the same with pretty much any member of Super Team EU provided the numbers are in their favour. And it's funny how comfortable Mozilla is feeling right now that he's picked up a damage item first. Yeah. This is something you just hardly ever see from a top lane Shivana. Yeah, that was something I was going to point out when we uh, headed back to that top lane. Normally you'd see uh, a defensive item, and we've commented before that you'll see a Blade of the Rune King maybe as a second item if you're feeling incredibly confident in the lane. But to get it first <laughs> means that Mozilla's going to be a little bit squishier and actually may result in Mikey R being able to trade a bit better, especially with Maweth around. They do uh, have an inkling that he's there, but the damage out of Mozilla is crazy strong right now. He still has Dragon Descent, so Morv did not want to go any further. Dragon Descent, blind, tries to pick up the Kuro. Rep uh, Repel comes up. Michael zoning him away from the drop down point, and he will back on off. Excellent. Meanwhile, goes on a rampage. Tarados gets locked up using Agony's Embrace. Tibbers comes down, does not quite connect, and Shoot Up is behind the turret. Good guy, Fresh blocks that route, and the middle tower will be dropping. Yeah, and they're also pressuring bottom tower as well, with Mozilla still farming out behind the the outer tower, uh, going up against Mikey R. You can see Mozilla is fairly low on health comparative to Mikey R, but I really still don't know whether Mikey R can trade against him. Probably no. Uh, <laughs> like, and Mozilla has been winning this lane up until this point, has just basically 1v2'd. I don't think Mikey R has the trading potential just yet. We'll see what he does with the itemization, but Mozilla going with that early damage item, you saw how much burst that was even onto, uh, onto Mowaf, who's 3-1. 
Yeah, it's, I just I'm I can't get over this kale pick. It's uh, just something that I don't know whether it's worked out for them against Shivana in previous games, or as you said, it's a composition choice, and it just seems to me that. Although, obviously, this, the player skill of Mikey R is apparent. You saw him in the last game. He's even doing a fairly consistent performance against the Shivana in this game. But it just seems like it, there's this mis mismatch of styles. And it's just not lending itself towards Eternity being able to hold back the rest of Super Team EU. It's pretty funky as well, because for anyone who hasn't really watched much of Mikey R, but Tarados in the mid lane gets hit by x once again with that combo Ginsu from the side. See where he goes, where will he stop? In fact, it will be trying to kill Exile and moves even further forwards, but the tower shot takes him down. Super Mega Death Rocket comes across. Uh, oh! Takes down Exile. <laughs> Exile actually moved just into that one. I think he'll probably kick himself for, uh, for getting hit by that. But it does, however, mean that they had a read on where Jinx was roughly. They had a line of where... <laughs> It, the origin of that Super Mega Death Rocket was. So Super Team, even after losing Exilo, will push forward. Tarados wasn't up either. So the 4v4 would have been uh, in their favor anyway. So they pushed down that middle inner turret and looked for the dragon. They found Mauer. Oh, the aggressive flash forwards, in fact, from the leads. Jumps over the wall using that lantern. But with the follow-up, it might be enough. In fact, it won't be. And Tibbers will just be doing his job and tanking up 50 gold goes to that team of... Uh, of uh, Eternity, not Roughnecks, and uh, now they're just taking down the dragon. The difficulty in this game is three players have a Roughnecks tag, and one <laughs> on Super Team has a Reason Gaming tag. So, yeah. <laughs> and considering we were casting Reason earlier, I keep wanting to call them Reason, so uh, if I stammer over that, that is why. But uh, Super Team EU feeling pretty confident in this game. The Kappas have been thrown out in the in-game chat after uh, Torados sure caught that. and Mozilla were trading over the walls. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't quite see who got it. Yeah, I think it went to Shivana there um, <laughs> with like a blind E over the wall, which was pretty fantastic considering it's only level 3 at this stage. Nice. The Kappas are out in force as I expect chat to uh, raise their Achoo. Kappas mm -hmm. fairly soon. There we go. Uh, always <laughs> nice to see. The full cycle of Twitch chat has been restored. <laughs> it's like the circle of life, just with more Kappa and Frank Z. Um, so in the bottom lane, again, the push comes in for Super Team Kappa, and there's very little to stop them. I'm just getting visions of Frank Z being lifted while a chorus <laughs> sings the circle of Twitch chat. Uh, Somebody I please make that. I'm sure we will, but either way, <laughs> Mozilla has been forced to use his Dragon Descent defensively. Hook does not quite land onto the backside of Exler. Here's a very large backside, and Moab will be picking up the white. <laughs> I forgot he was playing Gragas for a second, and I thought you were just being rather bad mannered about the players. I was like, wow, I didn't realise you were uh, going that That's ham here, false. But, uh, no, Gragas is uh, rather large, and... Uh, a bit of a departure from standard Gragas builds, actually. Rather than the Athenes on Holy Grail, they've actually opted for the Morella Nomicon as an item here, which, uh, of course, will give him the extra cooldown reduction that you'd expect coming out from the Athenes on Holy Grail. I don't know whether they actually need the Grievous Wounds passive that comes from the Morella Nomicon, and unless there's something that I'm missing here, it just feels like he would have been better off with... Uh, and Athene's Unholy Grill, and he does pick himself up a kill. Sorry, they're not letting you in on that one, but I just wanted to finish that point. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I think Exler tried to start dancing there, but decided to better off it as at least turned the corner. But that was some very smooth mechanics. Actually got the auto attack, flashed over the wall immediately, so Moaf's skill shot missed, and then just walked on out. So uh, it was very smooth, and apparently the item choice didn't even matter. Yeah, I, I mean, it's still a standard. It's a solid yeah. item from mid lane. It gives him all the stats he needs, so I just definitely different don't know whether it's it's a, a different type of build than the athenes and holy grail yeah uh, we can definitely go with that and be right every time by saying <laughs> it's different <laughs> well it but... is different i mean i'm not going to call him out for building it, it again <laughs> uh, we we mentioned this earlier different uh, players have different play styles yeah. so uh, it's, it's just one of those things mozilla's play style is to uh, dragon's descent over the wall to make sure he doesn't get caught i think that was the right option yeah, Mozilla is very aggressive, but it often means two people have to go after him. And then Flash Timbers onto Tarados and Nickhurt. The intervention can only save one. The jump comes through. Oh, the Gragas barrel. Double kill comes out. Knocks the uh, Tarados away from his team. But 2-0 might mean this uh, inhibitor turret falling. 
And this is a little bit more of a gold disparity and uh, game flow change to game number one. In game number one, we saw a very close game. However, Eternity just haven't really been able to get out of the starting blocks on this one. They've picked up a couple of kills where they've been able to. They pick up another one and Torridus goes in. There's one. Get excited. Mozilla goes back in. Moop just chunks him down alongside Torridus. But that will mean the rest of the team will get out relatively safely. Uh, oh, no, Terados does decide better of chasing. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things that I think Super Team have to be a little bit careful that they don't overextend because of the resets on Kha'Zix and also the get excited passive from Jinx. So uh, they do have to be careful they don't overstay. They weren't able to get that inhibitor and another kill there for Terados. And the re return kill for Chewed Up. He's trying to go a little further with this one. Stratagast has turned up, meaning that uh, Chewed Up really doesn't want to donate the red buff towards him. Super Team uh, keep picking these fights. They're getting some from it, but they're also get giving Eternity a couple of kills here and there, which is going to result in Eternity getting more gold. But I don't think Eternity's team composition is going to lend itself towards being able to hold any kind of siege here. They really rely on getting those resets in the team fights, and with Mozilla returning to that top lane, I don't think that uh, Kale is going to be able to do too much to more to this tower. Yeah, Mozilla just tanking the uh, tanking the auto attacks like a man, and Moath is currently them. And remember that Mozilla has only got one tank item. He would usually have two at this stage. Now he aggresses onto Mikey R. He doesn't have any defense against magic damage, and Moath is tearing through him. And Mikey R will pick up that kill. Again, Eternity are picking up kills, and that's not good if you're Super Team EU. Yes, Super Team have champions such as Shivana, which will do very well into the late game, but if they give the gold over to Eternity, they have to be careful in these fights that they don't get the items to really get maximize the resets. Yeah, and yes, Mozilla is saying Kappa every time he dies, but it doesn't mean <laughs> that that's a, a, a worth play. So right now in the bottom lane, Stratagas, Ginsu comes out, ace in the hole, Kratz will easily be enough damage to instantly take him down. Oh, Explosive Cask in the top lane nearly saves Gragas, but I think Exile is in a little too over his head, as Maweth will pick that one up to go on a killing spree. Yep, so picks all over the map, one for one, and Nikos does not quite land the flay. Tarotos jumps onto Ginsu, does not get the reset. That means Chudot will take one, looking for the next one. He's only dragging him towards him. There's the second. Moath jumps forward. He can, one versus two, but not if he's kited around. Yero comes in from the side, auto attacks, and also Mike Yar, there's the Timbers, will get the stun down. Moath drops to Chudot, and he's got also got the slow from Red Buff. Flash comes out, Stratagas has returned. Timbers will be taking that turret, but that is surely going to be the inheritor. And it looked like Eternity just didn't estimate the damage that came out from Tudor. Before that, he had four, he was 4 0 and 4. I believe he had the Bloodthirster Static Shield, as he does now, and a nice pickup from Strategist. But Tudor has a surprising amount of damage. He was getting good procs off on the headshot when it was available, and it just landed so much damage there onto Eternity that they ended up picking up the inhibitor even when they were against the numbers. Yeah, so Paws comes in, um, <laughs> uh, chews up saying Jinx aimbot, and very possible. I mean, there's some pretty clutch super mega death rockets this game. I think, though, it, the couple that they have fired long range has more been that the prediction has been so good out of Strategist that he's predicted where it was going to hit rather than, you know, it, they were recalling. The two that have hit Exile moved into earlier, and that time, uh, I believe uh, it was Ginsu moved into that one. So, uh, <laughs> be a pretty specific aimbot that I don't think exists, to be honest. So, yeah. uh, we'll pin this one down to Strategist skill. Honestly, like I, a lot of these ultimates that are hitting feel like if they weren't announced on TeamSpeak or whatever comms they're using <laughs> wouldn't hit. But because they're saying, oh, Jinx ultimate, they're like, oh, panic, turn around and then get hit by the traffic <laughs> assault. Yeah, that does sound like uh, something that may be, uh, may be the problem and yeah, Yero throwing out <laughs> the excuse that they've always used, the same in Dignitas UK, just to get in the heads a little bit of your opponents by every time they pause mid-game someone always says the cat jumped out the window so, <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe the cat has died on several occasions as well yeah, it has. from games they really I've watched need to start looking after their cats a little bit mm. better i'm just gonna i'm gonna say it there yarrow look after your your pets unbelievable but uh 
Here, here at uh, Radio TV, we do not approve at all of uh, of abuse to animals. But chewed up, moving forwards along with Yarrow. Will who picked up the who picked up blue? It was indeed chewed up. Yeah, they managed to seal that one away. Uh, they probably would have liked to have given that over to Exile. I, let's see whether he's got one on him. He doesn't actually have one uh, currently, so I think that was just a little bit of miscommunication, perhaps. But uh, nevertheless, stealing away the blue buff. As long as you get it on your side, that's really the main aim of that play. Yeah, indeed. Uh, as long as it is just denying it from the Team of Eternity. So a 10k advantage at this stage in the game. Looks like it might turn into a third game here stretch, which would be very exciting. Yeah, of course, that would make things uh, our first third game of the day. That was uh, <laughs> a little confusing for the brain, first third. But <laughs> It is at this stage of the day. <laughs> Uh, we do have another best of three coming as well as we'll see Ocelot's team in action. That will follow this best of three. But this is game number two here between Eternity and Super Team EU Kappa in the Scan Invitational Round of Eight, powered by Netgear, Sound Blaster, and Be Quiet. Now Exile looking maybe for the engage here, but his team aren't really grouped up for a fight yet. So really just throwing those barrels out to deny Ginsu gets locked in place. And instantly nuked down. Perfect. Um, Cocoon once again. Gragasbow comes out, does not quite predict the right place. It doesn't even matter because chewed up is legendary. Torado does pick up the shutdown. And Super Mega Death Rocket this la time lands, but Noz does not pick up a kill. Jurassicast not quite able to pick up Yarrow. And there's a dragon from the side. Box comes out from Nikos to kind of keep him away. Away from Stratagast for as long as possible. Gragas bow over the wall, picks up another. Nikos is the only one left standing who is willing to fight, backing on up, off with the flash. Mozilla is looking for the next one, and Torados has recalled only to save his base. And that really just now gives Super Team EU as much free reign as they want. Eternity stalled that fight out a little too long and ended up losing a Nexus turret for it. And that means Super Team EU can rotate around to the top lane, take down another turret, and then prepare for Baron. Because as soon as you have this much pushing in and that much damage to the base of Eternity, Super Team can really just pick their fights and pick their Baron. Yeah, and there's very little they can do about Stratagas. We'll see if they can use this window of opportunity to not get caught, um, and also potentially take down the Baron as well. But there is superb warding coverage, so they might just try and disengage, get their items, recall, get their health, or just instantly take down one of these junglers chewed up over the wall. Lands the pills over. And they can see the strategist is in that bottom lane, so I'm surprised that the recall is coming out here, although Yarrow is fairly low. I guess they don't really want to fight against the reset composition with Kha'Zix, just in case they take a, a poor fight, but really, Super Team EU, knowing Jinx is down in the bottom lane, have free reign of the map once again. Yeah, they uh, they really can't afford for anyone to become an instant reset for Kha'Zix, because as soon as one person goes down, it just becomes the reset train for Tarados, and that's the opposite of what they want, so they need those squishies to be at least as high as they can be before entering a team fight. And I'm wondering what Eternity can do here. They really are just banking on the resets in the team fights, but that's one of those things that is such a 50-50 that you have to make sure you get that kill. And sometimes you can burst too much to even chase that first reset, but it can end up that the rest of your team are down while Kha'Zix is resetting, although is trying to fight 1v4. So it's all on how Eternity can counter engage these team fights or even pick somebody off early on yeah indeed and shivana unlike most shivanas has picked the earlier blade of the rune king so they've got a lot of damage even on the bruiser who'll be diving onto the back line so already we do see the team of super team kappa moving into the top lane seeing if they can get themselves another inhibitor turret that would be their ideal prize but not getting caught would also be good all the skill shots will miss mozilla yeah, the inhibitor has respawned in the bottom lane, so that means that uh, no more super minions will be pushing through. The last one was killed as well, so that wave will return to some sense of normalcy. And means that uh, really this top lane isn't as open as Super Team EU Kappa would really like. So they're going to fall back, I believe, get some more ward coverage of the jungle, deny any coverage. But Eternity have nice blind stun their lands, but not really enough to follow up the engagement because they don't know how many members of Super Team EU are there. They know it's hitting someone, but they don't know how many <laughs> how many it's actually taking down. So, you know, we'll just see the rotations come in from Super Team Kappa. They're finding it very difficult to take down one of these inhibitor turrets 
uh, unless they get themselves a pick. I'm a little surprised they haven't just mobilized towards the bottom lane. They're very uh, focused on trying to get themselves a kill. Yeah, I was just thinking that myself. They haven't really started to rotate down there. They do want to make sure all lanes are pushing, and now bottom lane is the only lane that isn't pushing towards them. There's... Uh... Ping goes out, one of those damage warnings, but I believe it was only Mikey I was taking a tiny amount. And now Super Team will rotate down. Dragon is up in 40 seconds, and on the current patch, of course, Dragon is a little bit more worth taking at this point in the game. It used to be that the gold was fairly linear, but at this point in the game, worth a little bit more so that they can keep Dragon relevant as an objective. Yeah, it means that teams won't just simply ignore it when it starts spawning and... Uh... It, it means that the winning team will just take it anywhere, and there'll be no point going over it, but um, trying to contest it, but they will be taking it. So, right now, in the bottom lane, they uh, will be clearing up this ward, so making sure they cannot get any of that extra vision that they want from there. Ace in the hole comes through, lands onto Mikey R, combos with the explosive cask, and now they go for the fight as well as they can. The jump in and the intervention from Tarados doesn't instantly take down Chewed Up, and the ultimate was used quite preemptively from Jinx as well. First kill onto Tarados, inhibitor will surely fall off the back of that, and now they also have a minion wave. We'll see how far they can roll with this stress as the Itibus comes in. First kill, second kill comes out, looking to get themselves another. Mozilla is so incredibly tanky. This might be the game here and now. Yeah, that's surely the game here for Super Team, and that's what we were talking about was Kha'Zix got locked in place and they'd already used Intervention to stop him taking any damage as he went into the fight. It looks like they're just going to pick up kills at the back of this one, and it will go in favour of Super Team EU Kappa. Really good game out of them to bounce back and tie this series up one game apiece. Yeah, so again, it's at the stage where we have to question the KO pick, because... I honestly feel if Eternity had a more conventional pick at the top lane, a maybe more boring pick at one might say, it might have just won them the game. Yeah, and, and that's the difference. Is I, I wouldn't go so far as to say, and I know you're not implying that that 